Self-Subdued, October 17th, Ready for the Spirit. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with isaph, that thou mayest see. Revelation chapter 3 verse 18. There is to be in the churches a wonderful manifestation of the power of God, but it will not move upon those who have not humbled themselves before the Lord, and opened the door of the heart by confession and repentance. In the manifestation of that power which lightens the earth with the glory of God, they will see only something which in their blindness they think dangerous, something which will arouse their fears, and they will brace themselves to resist it. Because the Lord does not work according to their ideas and expectations, they will oppose the work. Why, they say, should not we know the Spirit of God, when we have been in the work so many years? Because they did not respond to the warnings, the entreaties of the messages of God, but persistently said, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. Revelation chapter 3 verse 17. Talent, long experience, will not make men channels of light, unless they place themselves under the bright beams of the Son of Righteousness, and are called, and chosen, and prepared by the endowment of the Holy Spirit. When men who handle sacred things will humble themselves under the mighty hand of God, the Lord will lift them up. He will make them men of understanding, men rich in the grace of His Spirit. Their strong, selfish traits of character, their stubbornness, will be seen in the light shining from the light of the world. I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Revelation chapter 2 verse 5. If you seek the Lord with all your heart, he will be found of you. The end is near, we have not a moment to lose. Light is to shine forth from God's people in clear, distinct rays bringing Jesus before the churches and before the world. The Review and Herald, December 23, 1890